We welcome you returning on our channel. Israel has gone through exiles, persecution, and a clear rejection of Jesus as the expected Messiah over history. Many have read this rejection as the end of a chapter. Actually, though, it might be the forerunner of something far more expansive and divine. Biblical prophecy tells us what intentions God has for Israel. Are their stories ending here we are seeing? Are the start of a magnificent comeback promised? We shall delve into the depths of Scripture. In this video to find Israel's future splendor and the promises of its restoration. I would want to thank you for following us and participating in our ministry before we start. Our team is a Christian one committed to faithfully sharing the Word of God. Your support is much valued. By forwarding this message to all of your friends and relatives, you will be most likely helping us. This enables us to keep disseminating the Christ message and reach more people. Let's start now. No other country in history has been the topic of so many religious discussions. Scriptural research and arguments as Israel has been. Their heavenly designation is what distinguishes these people so uniquely. God picked them to be the ones through. Which his message and purpose would be exposed to every country on earth. From its beginnings, Israel has occupied a vital role in God's will. And turned into the scene for some of the most important events in biblical history. Through Israel, God revealed his will, his covenant, and his power qualities that have spurred intense study and contemplation in countless generations of Christians and biblical scholars. Dear listener, this time we wish to discuss the eventual restoration of Israel, an issue of tremendous relevance for both Judaism and Christianity. Though much has been said about Israel being turned away by God, divine pledges about the redemption of the Jewish people and their territory abound in the scriptures. Over history, these forecasts have been read in several different ways. This paper explores biblical viewpoints on Israel's restoration, modern theological interpretations, and eschatological ramifications in light of historical background of the country. We will also look at the major effects of the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, and what this event denotes on the international scene now. Traveling through the history of this people from biblical times to the present, and understand how restoration has been seen both physically and spiritually in their relationship. With God will help one to better grasp the topic of Israel's restoration and its ramifications. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's periods, the heavenly promise the Hebrews would have to possess the land of Canaan defined them. But Israel's past has been one of cycles of wealth and crises, exiles, and restorations usually in response to their obedience or transgression of God's commandments set in the law of Moses. Their fate suffered both benefits and drawbacks from these deeds. Deuteronomy 28 clearly shows for the Israelites the advantages of obedience and the results of disobedience. One especially important verse emphasizes the results of disobedience. 64. According to the Bible, the Lord will disperse you among all people from one end of the earth to the other. And you shall serve other gods of wood and stone, whom neither you nor your fathers have known. Now, following the leadership of Moses and Joshua, the Israelis settled on the promised territory. Under David and Solomon's leadership, the United Kingdom of Israel peaked in the 10th and 9th centuries BC. But the kingdom split in two once Solomon passed away. The southern kingdom Judah, the northern kingdom Israel. This split undermined both kingdoms and resulted in outside invasions. The Assyrians seized the northern kingdom in 722 and sent its people into exile. The Babylonians demolished the first temple in Jerusalem, therefore sending the kingdom of Judah into exile in Babylon later in 586 BC. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, who said God would restore his people back to the promised land, kept alive in their words the hope of restoration. Furthermore, the proclamation of Cyrus, the great king of Persia, in 538 BC authorizing the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild, the temple known as the Second Temple was a pivotal event in Israel's restoration history. Though the people still waited for a complete restoration of their kingdom and connection with God, this signaled a phase of bodily healing. The Jews went through several diasporas or dispersion over the ages particularly following the Roman demolition of the Second Temple in Ad 70. Following approximately two millennia, this event signaled the start of a long Jewish diaspora in 
which the Jews kept a strong feeling of identity and yearned for a return to their native country. Restoration was understood at this period as the hope for a Messiah who would restore not only the country, but also the whole connection with God, not merely as a physical return. With the advent of Zionism in the 19th century, a political and spiritual movement supporting the return of the Jews to the land of Israel, the idea of Israel's restoration now veered in a different path. This came to show in 1948. When the State of Israel was born, many saw the founding of the State of Israel as a partial realization of long-standing prophecies of restoration. Different doctrines have evolved historically about Israel's atonement in Judaism and Christianity. In Judaism, restoration comprises the arrival of the Messiah who will bring peace, and whole restoration of the people, as well as the return to the land of Israel. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Though important, others view Israel's situation as a component of the process rather than the whole healing the scriptures promise. According to the premillennialist perspective in Christianity, the return of the Jews to Israel and the founding of the state of Israel mark the fulfillment of biblical prophecy concerning the end times. This perspective holds that Christ's millennial kingdom will be founded in Jerusalem following his second coming, and that the physical restoration of Israel indicates that his return is almost here. These days, Israel's restoration is interpreted differently in the amillennialist and postmillennialist perspectives. Understanding restoration in these movements depends mostly on the figure of the Messiah. According to Judaism, the Messiah is still to arrive and his arrival will start the whole healing process. Considered the Messiah in Christianity, Jesus has already delivered spiritual rejuvenation. On whether there will be a future physical fulfillment connected to Israel, though, there are several points of view. Based on scriptural evidence and what we know, Israel will be rebuilt in literal fulfillment of the prophecy, not symbolically, not now. God has not turned aside Israel. He will serve His perpetual mission with this people and still has plans for them. Theological discussion on the restoration of Israel still rounds today. Within Judaism, there is a discussion on whether the founding of the State of Israel should be seen as a secular event or if it represents part of prophetic fulfillment. Some ultra-Orthodox Jews believe only the Messiah can bring about actual restoration, so they do not acknowledge the state of Israel. Now, something significant to underline is that although sad, Israel's rejection of Jesus was part of the divine plan. For the Gentile atonement as well as the Jewish one, by means of Abraham's descendants, this event cleared the path for the gospel to transcend Israel and reach the whole planet, therefore fulfilling God's promise to benefit all countries. Let us now review some salient features. First, Israel's rejection and fulfilled prophecies. Not only in their rejection, but also in the following. When the Jews did not get Jesus as their Messiah, the prophecies were fulfilled. The prophet Isaiah described the Messiah as the nation's lighthouse. In this regard, Israel's rejection let the gospel of redemption reach first to the Gentiles. As Paul notes in Romans 11.11 when he says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, instead the Gentiles have arrived through their false redemption to inspire jealously. The termination of God's program for Israel does not follow from Israel's rejection. Conversely, this brief rejection serves a very important function inside the divine design. Israel's rescue to come to the Gentiles, as Paul describes in Romans 11, does not mean that God has turned aside his chosen people, Paul's ministry to the Gentiles second. After many Jews rejected the gospel, the Apostle Paul, who originally preached to the Jews, received a specific mandate to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. This rejection was seen as a divine opportunity to fulfill God's plan for universal redemption. Not only Abraham's descendants by flesh, but also all those who believe in Christ. Whether Jew or Gentile can be part of God's people. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul explains that through Christ's work on the cross, Gentiles who were once far from God's promises, have now been brought near by the blood of Christ. The wall that separated Jews and Gentiles has been torn down, and both groups now form one body in Christ. 
This indicates that through Israel's rejection of the Messiah, God used this event to offer salvation to all, regardless of their ethnic background. Furthermore, God's plan, as revealed in Romans 11, delves into the mystery of how Israel's hardening is not permanent. Paul explains that their rejection allowed the salvation of the Gentiles. But he also believes that in the end, Israel will be restored. God, in his sovereignty, used Israel's rejection of the Messiah as a means to bring the gospel to the nations. And in due time, he will bring Israel back to himself. Now, the Old Testament prophecies are fundamental to understanding Israel's future restoration. Throughout the prophetic books, various promises that God made to his people stand out. For example, in Isaiah chapters 11, 11, and 12, it is foretold that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and the islands of the sea. He will set up a signal for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. This passage refers to a future return from all the nations where there will be a gathering of the Jews who accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The image of a remnant suggests that not everyone will be restored, but a select group that has remained faithful. The reestablishment of Israel and Judah will occur in the last days, just before the establishment of the Messianic kingdom. Additionally, the prophet Ezekiel prophesied in chapters 37, 21, and 22 that God will take the children of Israel from among the heathen where they have gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. He will make them one nation in the land, upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. They shall no more be two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Amos, in chapters 9, 14, and 15, announces a transformed and glorious land, where God's people will constantly sow and harvest. At the same time, the land will be abundantly fertile, and God's blessings will never end. The Israelites will return to the Lord and will never abandon Him again. They will feel secure in the land. Now let's look at Israel's restoration in the New Testament. The references to Israel's restoration in the New Testament offer a renewed perspective on the promises of the Old Testament. Interpreted through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. For instance, in the Gospel of Matthew 19.28, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This passage implies that Israel's restoration is intrinsically linked to the kingdom of God. The mention of the twelve thrones reflects the central role of the apostles in proclaiming the gospel and their relationship with the tribes of Israel. Furthermore, in Acts 1.6, when the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? It reveals their expectation of a political and territorial restoration. Jesus responds by saying that the times are known only to the Father, suggesting that Israel's restoration is part of a broader divine plan encompassing both Jews and Gentiles. Finally, in Romans 11.25 and 26, Paul addresses Israel's future in the context of the plan of salvation, emphasizing that salvation is available to all, but that the Jewish people have a special place in God's divine plan. This hardening is temporary, suggesting a future restoration when Paul says, All Israel shall be saved. He refers to the collective of believers in Israel during the difficult times of the tribulation. The number of Jews who will place their faith in Christ will increase significantly. This period will end when Christ delivers these believers and defeats those who have not believed. All rebels and those who do not follow the path of faith will be condemned. The remnant of believing Jews who survive the end of the world, along with the faithful of past generations, will constitute what is known as all Israel. Now, Israel's restoration, according to biblical teaching, is intrinsically linked to the recognition of Jesus as the Messiah as expressed in Matthew 23.39. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord.
Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos.